Judging by some of the comments I got on the first video of my Orc tutorial series, I sort of jumped the gun with the way I structured that video, so I got straight into talking about how to actually use Orc and what you can actually do with it, because I just assumed that everyone actually watching that video already knew, you know, what Orc actually was and why you might want to use it, what sort of situations you might want to use it in, things like that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, if you have absolutely no idea what Orc is, like with, say, Grep and Sed and LS and Cat and things like that, it's one of the standard Unix utilities on your Unix-like system. But even though it can be used inline like any of those applications, it is much, much more than this. It is a full-fledged data processing language, and you can use it in place of things like Python, and if you have some older scripts, in the place of things like Perl. Now, it is a data processing language, so I wouldn't try to fully replace Python with it, but if you're trying to work with heavy amounts of data, like you're trying to, say, work with big CSV files, or things that you can very easily break down into different fields, Orc might be a tool that you should really consider in that situation. Now, when you just run the Orc utility and you try to run something in line, you can go and write a multi-line script in that section. But the problem that I have with doing that is if you're going to go and write it in, say, an editor instead, you're going to get things like syntax highlighting and some extra nice things that might make it a bit easier to actually write. So anything multi-line, even if you're not going to be repeating it, I would really recommend just doing it in a file. And especially if you're going to repeat it, make sure it's in a file so then every time you want to run it, it's just going to be sitting there. Now, if we break Orc down to its absolute core components and forget about the meaning of other things, Every single thing you do in Orc is broken down into two things. We have patterns and we have actions. So the most frequent patterns you're going to be using are regex patterns. So searching for some sort of string in the data set. So say you want to search for something like hello world in a text document. That is going to be a pattern that you're searching for. Then the next thing you have is the action. So an action basically describes what you want to do to the data you found. So let's say you found hello world. Maybe you want to print that. Maybe you want to go and change the first letter of each word into capitals. Maybe you want to reverse the word. Basically anything you want to do to the data, that is going to be in an action. Now keep in mind that there are some special kinds of patterns. So there's things like say the begin pattern and the end pattern. So those say if you're at the start of the file, run this action. And if you're at the end of the file, then run this action. Also, if you have a conditional inside of your orc statement that isn't inside of an action, that condition will say something like, if your line number is greater than 10, that is going to be a pattern as well. Basically, anything that isn't inside of curly braces is going to be a pattern. Now, even if you're a fairly experienced programmer, it's very likely that you haven't actually come across a language that actually works the way the orc does. So, Unlike, say, C, Java, C++, Python, Ruby, Perl, anything like that, all of those are procedural languages. Some of them are OO languages, some of them are not, but all of them are procedural. So a procedural language is basically a language where you describe exactly what you want to do, how you want to do it, and you must do this in great detail. So if you want to do something like, say iterate over a string in C++, you have to describe exactly how to iterate over a string. It doesn't do that automatically for you. Now, obviously, there might be library functions to do this, but behind the scenes in the library function, you can go and see how this is actually being implemented in the language. Now, Orc, on the other hand, is a data-driven language. So in this case, you basically describe the data that you're working with the data that you want to find, and you don't really care how it actually goes and does so. So for example, if you do something like have a search pattern inside of Orc, it goes and does some sort of regex search. You don't really care about how it actually does the regex. Whereas if you did that in a procedural language, you could decide, okay, I'm going to use this type of regex or this type of regex or this type of regex. Orc does all of that for you. You don't really think about that sort of stuff. Now, there isn't a hard border that exists between data-driven and procedural languages. It's just that Orc is more data-driven than you've probably come across before. So in the case of, say, C++, as I mentioned before, there are library calls that can make it feel data-driven. And in those cases, if you don't look at the way it's implemented, that is going to be a data-driven way of working. Or in the case of Orc, you still do have access to conditionals and loops and things like that, that you'd normally have in a procedural language. So you can go and describe how you actually want to modify the data. But then other parts, like say the search patterns and things like that, all of those are going to be data-driven. By using a data-driven tool like Orc, it gives you more time to think about the problem you actually want to solve and basically the result that you want to get from it. Now, 
This doesn't mean that data-driven tools are inherently going to be better when working with lots of data. If you need to worry about performance, a data-driven solution is always going to be slower. And this is because all of the implementations need to be very generic. Whereas if you, say, do it in C++ or even Python or something like that, you can go and specify the way you're implementing the solution to be very tightly coupled to the data. And this can give you a lot of speed benefits where you can ignore stuff that doesn't need to be considered inside of your data set. So here's an example of a very simple data problem. Let's say that you want to match on a word and then replace it. This word could be inside of a string, it could be inside of a document, it could be inside of a database. It doesn't really matter what the string is inside of, just think about matching a string and replacing it. So if you're gonna be doing this in a procedural language, you have to go and actually specify how to move through the data set. So are you gonna be splitting the data set into tokens and then comparing each token? Are you gonna be looking at each individual character and then comparing it with the string that you wanna replace? Are you going to be comparing each individual character and then trying to check if it lines up with the characters in the string you're trying to find? You have to define how to actually stop searching, what to do in case of, say, invalid data. Like, let's say there's a number and you don't really know what to do with the number, or what if there's a missing value? In a data-driven solution, though, you would say, okay, I have this word I want to match on. I have this word I want to replace it with. I don't really care how the tool actually finds the word, just find me the word and do the thing. So let's actually look at a real world use case for orcs. So I have this list of bookmarks over in this folder right here. Basically, it's just a list of all of my browser bookmarks because I don't want to have them stored inside my web browser. So what I can actually go and do with this is I can actually go and take that list of data. As you saw, it was separated with a colon. And what I can do is actually go and select the bookmark I want to use. Now, ignore the dear menu part. I'm basically just using that as a selector. So let's say I want to go and select something like YouTube. So if I go and press enter on this now, what Orc is going to do is it's setting the file separator. It's setting it to colon. So that means that anywhere there's a colon, split the line into two separate fields. So in this case, on the left-hand side, we have the name, and on the right-hand side, we have the URL. And then what I'm doing after that is just printing out whatever I selected. So in this case, it prints out the URL for YouTube, and then I can put this into my web browser and actually open up that website. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Orc isn't a panacea, and there are places where a data-driven language, even though you can technically reframe a lot of problems into data-driven problems, a data-driven language just isn't going to be the most sensible way to approach the problem, and it's going to be a much better idea to actually use a procedural language instead. But even in cases where you can frame it as a data problem because it's a heavily data-reliant problem, like say you're trying to work on JSON data or HTML or XML, it might not be the case that Orc always is the best tool to use. So Orc is great when you can very easily separate the file into fields. So say you have CSV, you have TSV, you have my weird file separated with colons, or say you have a config file where on the left-hand side you have the variable name, on the right-hand side you have the value, and between them you have an equal sign. All of those things, Orc is an absolutely amazing tool to use. But as I said, JSON, HTML, XML, you can do it in Orc, and some people have found ways to actually make it work. But because of how those languages are structured, it might make more sense to go and use a specialized tool for that language. But if you really, really want to do everything in Orc, there actually are tools that go and flatten out those files and turn it into a format that makes a bit more sense to work with Orc. So you'll have the variable name on one side, the value on the other side, and then a very sensible separator in between them. And that makes it very easy to work with Orc. Now, there is another data processing tool that exists on your system called SED. Now, SED and ORC are very different tools, and they do very, very different jobs. But for a lot of situations, they can achieve basically the same result. So, ORC splits lines into fields. So, if you have a CSV, it'll say data 1, data 2, data 3, data 4. And then you can go and operate on this data independently of each other. Now, to help with this, you're given access to the full array of programming constructs. So, while, for, do while, if statements, things like that. And also in, say, like the GNU implementation, you even have access to things like multi-dimensional arrays. Said, on the other hand, is a stream editor. So, if you pass a data stream into it, whether that is from standard input or from a file, doesn't really matter. It will then modify the stream and the output is the modified stream. So it doesn't actually go and split lines into fields. If you really need fields, 
You can do it in ways in said, but it's not really straightforward. Where said shines, though, is with data where fields can't really be assumed. Now, you can go and do this inside of Orc, but the power of Orc is when you actually have access to fields. So let's say you have just a wall of text data. Now, you can obviously split this into tokens based on a space, but in a lot of situations, that's not really going to be a helpful thing to do. So if you're just trying to pattern match somewhere in this data set, said is really really good at doing this the one problem i find with said though is the syntax is absolutely atrocious because most of it is regex and then other things on top of regex if you go and read a said statement have fun understanding that if you don't always do said work the nice thing about orc on the other hand is because it looks like java and it looks like c and it looks like c it's a c style language even if you don't do any orc for a couple of months, you can look at it, understand the structure, even if you don't understand all of the function calls, you can kind of guess what it's actually doing. That's not happening with said. This doesn't mean that said is useless though, so my suggestion is anything where you're going to be doing it on a single line, it doesn't really matter which tool you actually use because when the solution is that simple, Orc and said are probably going to be just as easy to use as each other. I use said a lot of the time in those situations though. Now, for anything multi-line, that's when you're getting to the point where said is going to be very difficult to maintain. And if it's something where you need to actually repeat it, good luck trying to modify that in a couple of months. So I would suggest using Orc unless you're going to do everything in said. You're going to be one of those weird people who actually understand how said actually works. So going forward, I will be restructuring the way I do my Orc tutorial videos. What I'm probably going to be doing is starting with a completed script. It's not going to be a super complex script, but it's going to have everything that I want to be teaching in that video. So by the end of the video, you'll know everything you actually need to know to read the script, rewrite the script, and then actually go and extend it and make something new with the same concept. So hopefully next time the video is a bit more useful. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andre Nathan, Montada Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D. Road, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 patrons. If you want to go and support my work, there are links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.